Now, do we need a parliamentary inquiry into the Russell Brand story? 0207 862 222. Senior MPs are warning an inquiry could be launched into a culture of so-called open secrets in the TV industry after multiple women accused Russell Brand of sexual assault and even rape. He denies all allegations. Dame Carolyn Dynage, the culture minister, said TV execs could be invited to give evidence in front of parliament and alleged victims could come straight to MPs to detail their experiences. Emily, do you think it's necessary? I do think it's necessary because I think um, we haven't stamped out this kind of behaviour in the entertainment industry yet. I know these allegations are coming from um, quite a long period ago, sort of 15 years, and Me Too then came afterwards. But I think if media bosses understand that if they allow this kind of behaviour to carry on in any of their studios and that they will be hauled in front of a parliamentary inquiry, I think they will think a lot harder when they hear these rumours. They will look into them much more thoroughly and they won't allow themselves, one hopes, to be swayed simply because that person is highly successful, bringing lots of uh, a big audience in. They will be swayed by protecting their staff and having proper behaviour in a working environment. So, yeah, because we're talking about sort of TV, radio industry stuff here, Kevin, aren't we? Where maybe that it's maybe it's a branch of showbiz. That's why stuff is going wrong. It is, and they they value the ratings that big names can bring. So often, blind eyes are turned, and people are allowed to get away with terrible. Behaviour. I, b I believe an inquiry, a parliamentary inquiry, is necessary. I do question the timing, though. If the police are examining mm. a complaint, which may go into a formal investigation, you couldn't have a proper parliamentary inquiry at that time because you might prejudice the case. We can talk about it in the round, but you can't have individuals coming forward and making potentially serious allegations against someone. Well, because then Brand, if he was ever put on trial, his defence could say this whole case has been polluted by the MPs. Absolutely. Right? Now, par Parliament, you have a degree of, of protection from contempt of court, but the Speaker is pretty hot on trying to keep people in, in order during live cases. But uh, I, I agree with Emily, though. The a parliamentary grilling, is is pretty serious for the people who go before it. And it does focus minds. However, I saw with ITV in the Philip Schofield case where he said he was unwise, but it wasn't unlawful to have a relationship mm. with a much younger member of staff. They had a hearing on that, but very little could be said because at the time there, there was an internal inquiry by, a, uh, an external inquiry, they actually call it, with a barrister yeah. going on at ITV. Now, if there's a potential of a criminal trial, I think it would be very difficult mm. to reach, get to the bottom. So they may have to wait to whether or not the police bring charges. If they do bring charges, wait for the conclusion of that. Mm. That will be the time to see what lessons it's, can be learned. Okay, it, it's always very dangerous to, to draw in other cases. So, you know, if we mention Savile, there are all kinds of parallels that don't apply. Yes. But I was thinking about the John Leslie case, which goes back a while, maybe 20 years now, where you ended up with one particular allegation that then multiplied, and by the end, there were about 25 yep. different women accusing him. I don't believe he ever had a conviction from any of it. No. Um, so so you, you then end up with this really, really strange situation where you say, this person may have behaved terribly, but not break, broken the law. And, and actually, funnily enough, we're in that with Kevin Spacey a bit, aren't we? And a guy called Noel Clark as well. We're in that weird limbo now with some people. It, it is tricky because you, you, you can, people can argue this is trial by media. Yeah. And certainly at this point, it is trial by media um, because nothing has come to court. There has someone gone to the police now and put a formal charge in. So I do think you, you do need the law put in place. But at the same time, sometimes laws may not be broken, but clearly there are things going on within industries that many of us may look up to. And within companies, we expect a certain sort of level of behaviour and respect to go on. And I think that society, in a way, is quite good at moderating that kind of behaviour. Mm. And mm. how we moderate that behaviour and what is seen as acceptable and not acceptable, of course, does change as a society we develop in many ways and okay. become a more fair society, we would hope. Let's, yeah, but I guess these people always, they, break, they, they sort of get attention by breaking the mould, whatever rules we set up. Douglas in Edinburgh, hi. 
Hi there, I just think it's laughable when you listen to anybody asking uh, an MP to either condone or condemn someone's behaviour uh, when you look at the standard of MPs that we have nowadays. They take drugs regularly, they, they know about it, the police know about it, how, how they never arrested in the, on the parliamentary estate, I'll never know. I don't know how much, I mean... I was only going to add the right. There are 650 MPs. Now, they're not yeah. all on drugs all the time, I don't think. Well, look at the amount of theft that's going on. The amount of theft. Uh, backhanded deals that are being done by okay. MPs in favour of rich people, basically. The tax evasion that goes on. Just, if you actually just look at what's uh, evasion and uh, the, the, I can't remember the other word there's now, two types of uh, avoidance, sorry, avoidance and evasion. And we have a country that is run by a bunch of criminals. That's all I can see nowadays. Because I suppose, I mean, we've, we've seen quite a few parliamentarians go to jail in the last few years. But I mean, yeah. I do. What an example we say. Well, yeah, but, you know, not, but the public are all standing looking at that. Yeah, but, and then but when the PC plod pop, pops on the on the street corner and arrests one of them for breaking a minor uh, law. They, they just need to look around and look at the people that's running the country. All right. Okay. All right. right. Well I think I think Kevin might, Kevin probably knows that well yeah. better than anyone. I, I work in Parliament, and no, I don't take drugs. Uh, but Douglas, I, I get your sentiment about some MPs, uh, and, and Westminster has its uh, own problems on the the abuse of women and bad behaviour. But not all MPs are like that. Uh, I assure you, whatever their political party, whether they're SNP, Conservative, Labour, Liberal, Democrat, from any of the other parties, they're not all like that. Some are. And thankfully now, they're being held to account. They're being kicked out, they're being suspended, they're being named, and they're being shamed. So not, not every MP is like that, but I, I get where you're coming from when, yeah. if Westminster's got its problems, how can it sit in judgment on others? Right. But it's the best we've got. Let's go to Mar Thank you, Douglas. Let's go to Margaret in Kent. Margaret, what do you think of parliamentary inquiry into Russell Brand? Oh, he hasn't been found guilty of anything. I don't particularly like him myself, but I don't think it, it, they should be unless he's found guilty. He has to be found guilty. And if these ladies, young ladies, have been assaulted by this person, they should have gone to the police, somehow get a family member, somebody to listen to them. And to Day, there's social media then after that. If nobody listens to them, then they put it out there. Well, it's, it's hard. There were, there were examples of, I think a couple of them had been sent threatening letters by a lawyer working for Brand. So, and it's, it's scary, I think, Margaret, if you think you might be the only victim, you well, wonder if you'll be believed. I was assaulted when I was 17, and I didn't know I was assaulted. And and I didn't know who d did it to me. But if I did, I would have gone to the police. Okay, Whether Margaret. I would have been listened to at the time, I don't know. But I would have had it registered. Uh, you have to do it. Okay. You can't worry about a threatening letter from anybody. If you have been assaulted, Emily? please go to the police. So oh, I'm going to introduce our next guest who I know you know in just a moment, but I, I, I said we'd come to Emily just about Margaret's point. Margaret says the, the women who are accusing Russell Brand now didn't go to the police at the time and they should have done. One of them did. They did go to a rape centre. They just didn't end up pressing charges. Um, and there's a, a very complex... It is part of why a lot of uh, rapes don't make it to prosecution, is it's one-on-one. -on -one. And a lot of women against particularly someone with influence, fame, power, lots of people to back them up, they know, A, they may not want to get into a court situation, and B, they, they, they feel they won't be believed. Mm -hmm. So that person didn't end up. As to the 16-year-old, I imagine there was a huge amount of shame because if anyone who's read, I'm not going to repeat it now, but anyone who's read the details about what happened to her in the bedroom with him... I imagine the utter shame that she felt being put through that. And a lot of people will, be, will feel, a lot of women will feel, was that my fault? Why was I there? Why did I allow myself into that situation? And there's a huge sort of sense of like, it's the victim's fault. Yeah. And that's why they don't go and, and seek help because they feel guilt that they allowed themselves 
to be involved with someone who ended up humiliating and behaving was, like that. I was relating them. yesterday because I saw Sean Locke, the late Sean Locke, talking about Brand and saying, here's why I hate Russell Brand, because he's the guy who comes around because he's, he's got a 17-year-old daughter. He's, he's passed on now, Sean, but he had young teenage daughters and he just knows Russell Brand comes into the house. Hello, I love your abode, your wonderful abode. How lovely to meet you. And just does that thing and meanwhile is assaulting the daughter. Now, historian Tessa Dunlop, one of our favorite people is here because Tessa posted a video yesterday where she discussed Brand and her own experience of power abuse in the workplace. I'm on an NDA, that's a non-disclosure agreement, which means legally I'm not allowed to say too much. But I was constantly bothered by a boss in the media at the same time as Russell Brand was on the prowl. Like Russell Brand's accusers, I was very young, I had no agency, I had a very insecure job. Not only are younger women more attractive to predatory men, but conveniently, they also have less of a voice, are more insecure and are less able to handle what's happening to them. I didn't play ball with this guy. Instead, I lost my job and I sued him. And it was an absolute nightmare. It cost me my career. I was in the wilderness for 10 years. I nearly lost my house. So do I believe Russell Brand's accusers? Yes, I do. But is Russell Brand the only guilty party? No, he's not. An entire industry facilitated the way he behaved. So, Tessa, the brand story has hit home hard for you. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I wouldn't have posted that. OK, I'm under an NDA. I wouldn't have gone there even five years ago. I think we have to recognise that there has been a huge shift in the way we approach these matters and our understanding of them. I remember at my time, and I'm almost an exact contemporary of, of Russell Brands. I remember <clears throat> 20, 15 years ago when I was explaining what happened, it was like talking into the void. People didn't understand the danger when power intersects with bad behaviour. And that idea of the guilty party being the woman, often you've got your job because you are attractive. Mm. And there's this weird contradiction where these the younger the girl and the more attractive she is, invariably, the less agent she has at work. She's probably just the runner, the tease maid, who knows? But with this weird elixir, this allure that makes her bizarrely vulnerable and hugely appealing. And in your case, you fought it. You fought it through the courts. You, your ND, I don't know whether your NDA is with the BBC. It didn't go to court. It didn't go to court. Okay. Your NDA is with the BBC or can you not no, say I that? No, I don't say where, it, okay. where, where my NDA so, is. But it was an employer who, who said, look, we'll settle this, but you must never speak about it. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't find it, but that's why I'm just not saying anything about it because I couldn't find it. But they are a bit of a bane, these NDAs. But, but, but the truth is, um, it's on the question of why don't women speak out, there are either bosses in power or there are celebrities. Either way, they're generally powerful. That means they have a whole ecosystem around them. So, so if you are somebody who wants to blow the whistle on their behaviour, you are going to disturb that ecosystem. All the acolytes that work for the individual are also going to be disrupted. So it's not really in anyone's interest necessarily to support you in what you're doing. And, and you're very isolated. The woman then gets, I guess, gaslit and, yeah. they, and the person says, well, she's crazy, she's a bunny boiler, or whatever. She, or she deserved it. And the other thing is you're sometimes, every case is individual and different things happen. And, but you're often very isolated because people go, oh, she's only there because he fancies her. Oh, she's only, and what really struck home for me in that dispatch I, I, I had, I had that so to me on my first day in my first newspaper yeah. job. You're yeah. only here because the editor wants to suck, blah, blah, and, very and, bad language. And it might, and the, and the difficulty From my male is, boss. But, but, but <laughs> so anyway, this stuff definitely went on. <laughs> but the difficulty is that might have been true, which mm. then makes you incredibly vulnerable. No, would I might you, say it you... wasn't true in my case, but the fact was this, that was the opinion amongst some men in the newsroom. I, I can tell you, I think in my case, that was why I first got the job. I think that was why no, it wasn't I was in mind. Mind. No, I've, I've never suffered but... any of this. Uh, I'm, I can't I'm, I'm, think I'm why not, Kevin. <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going through and I'm thinking of my male yeah. friends, family, colleagues, you're a very close associates. Young lad. Just not, not happen. Now, it, it probably does happen in exceptional circumstances to, to men, but it's, mm. it's not widespread as far as I, mm. I can, uh, I it can is, see. It's the, the CD boss, isn't it? That's, this is the profile. 
of it's the guy who, as you say, brings on women because he fancies them. And then when they reject him, he then assaults them professionally. Yeah. And then you've nowhere to go because you're actually quite isolated because people resent you because, oh, you've got the job they want or just because he fancies you. Mm -hmm. So there's weird. But, but it, with, with, brand, with brand, we're talking about something different here. Yeah. Here's a weird thing. He 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 may have been facilitated by bosses of both genders. It's a different thing. Yes, but I think my broader point was if bosses were behaving in this seedy way and they were also employing the likes of brand, what did we expect? And we platforming brand and we're laughing at his revolting jokes where he's saying he's choking. You know, we we are all complicit mm. in that toxic environment. I think the sh laughter was, sh I now think that, that laughter was shock, but, yeah. I, but, it, but it registered as normal laughter. His comedy act was like a confession yeah. of everything he'd done. Claire in Newport, do you, we'll go, we'll, test us here with her own story, but we'll talk about whether you you think there should be a parliamentary inquiry into brand. I do, absolutely. I think that until we make this a general societal issue where everyone is held accountable, if we look at it, we've got it in the police, we've got it in West, uh, Westminster, the royal family, general society, comedy, everywhere. Until we teach our little boys to be respectful and our little girls to not let a man or anybody else touch them, then it's going to carry on. Yeah. I, I, do you think Russell Brand was in plain sight then as someone who was an abuser? Absolutely. Uh, I, I do. I found him funny at the time, but I think that I wasn't, I know it's an awful word to say and it's, it's highly hate, hated, but woke. I think it's only recently that I started to sort of realise that this is not acceptable and that what I thought was funny isn't funny but then I did not watch any of his more recent stuff with the whole mascara running kind of thing yeah. that I find absolutely appalling well that was all performed on stage and everyone laughed I mean that's that's the, the permission that he felt he'd been given I guess thank you Claire very much you saw I mean of course now what he, he's done is he's gone into a platform I think it's called rumble so it's not YouTube mainly they won't take him off because they're an outright platform so they'll think they're fighting for freedom here it's, it, you know, if you'd want to try and cancel him, I don't know what you cancel him from. That's the, that's the thing. He's got his own making a living on Rumble. Peter in County Durham, what do you think? I don't think there should be uh, an inquiry at all. Why not? Because we have these inquiries, and at the end of them, God knows how much they cost, but uh, the, the, the say, lessons will be learned, you know. Lessons are never learned. Yeah, I mean, we were told after Harold Shipman that there won't be any more serial killers in the NHS. And uh, Peter, parliamentary inquiries are very cheap. They're very fast and lessons uh, can be learned. They can have an impact. For instance, the boss of Royal Mail lost his job recently after a, a hearing in which he misled MPs over the electronic monitoring and treatment of, of posties. So I, mean, I think it'd been very fatalistic uh, where well, you think nothing, nothing ever happens, nothing changes. It, it does. It doesn't mean it's always fast. It doesn't mean it's always quick. But we can make social progress. And you can summon people. That's the th you can actually call them in, whereas journalists can't necessarily do that. They no, can, no. They can bring you, people if, in. If you get summoned to a parliamentary inquiry, if you don't go, they can send the sergeant at arms to drag you there. With a big halberd. Would you, Tessa, would you want Parliament to get involved here? I'm not sure about Parliament, but I was listening to Lorraine Hegacy, former controller of BBC One, yesterday, and I thought she made quite a valid point where a lot of women who experience these things know that if they don't please the, the person with the power, they probably will end up losing their positional job. And what would be, I think, extremely useful is, and it, this is particularly prevalent in the media, where there is uh, more supply than there is demand, especially at the moment with, with television, half of television is, is unemployed and on its knees. So there's a shortage of jobs, you're trapped, you don't have somewhere different to jump to. It'd be very useful to have an ombud ombudsman that every player, ITM, BBC, Discovery, who knows what they're all called, Channel 4, all pay into so that you can go in full confidence and say, I'm having this issue, and they can identify mm. patterns, individuals. So say it had been brand uh, 15 years ago. Wow, well, we've had seven cases complaining about 
about, hey, you know, actually, so I, I outside think... Outside your employer. Outside your I think employer. That's, I, I have outside. to say, I think that's a very valid mm. point. I think there have been periods in my career where I have wanted, and I was talking about that instant very early on in, in my career, which thankfully was the sort of only really, only really bad one in, in the news industry, is that I didn't feel... I could go to anyone and complain about it because I would end up being punished yes. for being the whistleblower.